Let's discover Miro Talk, a free open source video conference platform with a support up to 4K resolution and 60 FPS while being available on all major browsers and platforms. Miro Talk is the new go-to solution for online meetings, broadcasting and video calls, leveraging the full power of WebRTC. It comes with four main products. SFU optimized for a large number of participants, C2C focused on one-to-one -one call, Bro specialized in live broadcasts, and P2P, the all-arounder solution with a lot of unique features such as live transcript, speech-to-text, integrated chat GPT, and more. You can try and use it directly for free from p2p.mirotalk.com and once you want to have your private instance, you can follow the installation guide on their GitHub repository or use a platform like ours, LSTO, to take care of the installation, backups, updates and maintenance for you. To install Mirotalk on our platform, head to ls.io and click on login. Then click on Deploy My First Service, search for Miro Talk, and click on Select. Choose between the different cloud provider, regions, and service plan based on your needs. Then click on Next. You have the choice between three levels of support. I will keep the free included one. You can rename your instance and change the administrator email. I will keep the default one. And once you're ready, click on Create Service. Once the installation is finished, you receive an email telling you that your instance is ready. It includes some instructions like how to set up your custom domain and a link to get your credentials. So let's follow this one. Click here to get the password. Click on this button to copy it to your clipboard and access your instance by following the URL. So we have email. It is your admin email you set up on your instance. So by default, it's your LSTO admin account address email and the password. You can paste it from your clipboard. Then the username, you can type whatever you want. By default, we create one named admin for you. But if you want to name it something else, you can just rename yourself and click on login. You will see a warning that you need to verify your email to be able to log in. Open your mailbox and click here to confirm. Once it's done, click on OK and re-click on login and it should work. When you land on the dashboard, you can see the different mirror talk project that you can use and also the list of rooms available. Currently, we didn't create one, so we'll do it just after. Before, let's talk about the four different products available. We have MiroTalk P2P, SFU, C2C, and Bro. If you wonder the differences, you can open the GitHub repository of it. The main one that we will use, P2P for peer-to-peer, -peer, simple, secure, fast real-time video conferences with support for up to 4K resolution and 60 FPS. This is the generic one to handle conversation between multiple users. Then you have SFU, Selective Forward Unit, real-time video conferences for large groups. It is interesting when you have more than eight participants and it can handle up to 100 participants per single CPU. So it's very optimized for it. Then you have MiroTalk C2C for cam to cam which is ideal when you have two participants. And the last, MiroTalk Bro for live broadcast, and it's best when you have one presenter and multiple viewers. For our first one, we will be using MiroTalk P2P. You just have to pick a room name. Either you click here to generate random names, or you can name it like you want. I will name it LSTO and click on Join Room. During the loading process, you will have a request to use your camera and also your microphone. You can select if you have multiple cameras, microphone and speakers. Enter your name and click on join meeting. Then it will display a QR code and a link to invite other users. I will join it using my mobile. So I open the QR code scanner or the photo. Scan it. And I have the exact same experience. So do I want to allow my camera? Yes. Same for the microphone. And here I am. I have the choice between my different cameras, so front or rear one, microphone, and I need to enter my name. Let's name myself John. And I will mute my mic so I don't cause Larsen. And let's join the meeting. So now I can see two versions of myself. I will keep it open, but disable the camera. And let's go back to the desktop. We are in a meeting room with two users, so me, Wawa, and the other one, which is John. On the left, we have different options we can use. The first one, we've already seen it. Invite other users. Then you can hide yourself from the room view. 
enable or disable your camera. Same for your microphone. You can start screen sharing, either your Chrome tab, the window or the entire screen. You can decide also to start recording the session, which can be pretty useful if you need to keep trace of your meeting. Also open it in full screen, open the chat. So let's do it. Hello. We can see that the message is displayed on my mobile device too. And there is that button here, same that if you enable that option here, to enable text-to-speech on your messages. Message from Wua. The message is hello. And it's using the device text-to-speech API available. The chat itself, it's not only text messages, but you can add some emojis right in markdown syntax. So let's say, hello, this is example markdown, put a list, hit enter, and I forgot to enable markdown. So let's do it again. And you can see the difference here. Hello is in bigger, markdown is in italic, and the list is displayed as a list. So you can go further, add images, links within the chat itself. You can even enable chat GPT inside the message chat, but it requires an API key. So if you say hello, you should get an error. So add the environment variable to add your OpenAI API key. To add environment variables with Alessio, go to your admin dashboard, click on update config, switch to environment, and here you can add edit variables. Let's continue with the chat. You can add files, share a link to view directly videos or audio played within Miro Talk. And instead of writing to all the users, you can decide to write private messages. Currently we only have one, but you can write to that person directly. In addition to that advanced chat feature, there is one very useful feature, which is here, the caption. What it is, so we had text to speech, we can have the opposite speech to text. When I will talk, it will add the transcript here. You can choose the language you want, and once you're ready, click on start. Hello, how are you doing? Thank you for joining me today. Don't forget to click on stop so it stop the speech recognition. And you can see that what I said has been recorded and we have the full transcript available here. And we can even save the messages so we have the full transcript of our meeting session available in a file. If I open the file that I just downloaded, you can see it's a JSON array with when it was sent, the name of the participant who said that, and the speech to text version. To my opinion, it is a killer feature. Then what other features do we have? We have a more classic one to send reaction. So it's emojis, but it's nicely displayed on the bottom left here. You can raise your hand. So if you want to speak without interrupting the discussion, you can just raise your hand like in Google Meet. You also have here the whiteboard. And what is very interesting about it is I can write on the desktop, hello, it's very difficult with the trackpad but it also opens it on the mobile. So I can just draw here. And it's shared between all the participants. Then we also can share files, which is in the same that in the chat. And finally, the room settings here. So you can decide to log the room. If you do so, you can define a password. You can also send email invitation, adjust the settings for the video, same for the audio. Manage the participants if you want to mute some people or to kick them from the room. By the way, it's very scary to have me in double, so I will hide myself. And let's leave the room and see the different options we have with SFU, C2C and Bro. So do we want to leave a feedback? No, it's fine. Because we've seen that SFU is for more than eight participants, I will have some complication doing it alone, so I will open C2C. You can see it's a bit different. We have to name the room manually. Let's name it LSTO2. You choose your username and you join it. It is based on the same core, but the overall experience is very slightly different. So you can just invite other users. So copy and share room URL. You have the QR code. Same experience on the mobile. Joan is back. Join. Loading. I need to allow my camera and I'm here. Go back to the desktop. We have me on the top left and the other user without a camera, I disable it. 
for John here. And the experience here is very close to what you find in Google Meet. The features are a bit different, for example, the chat. You open it, it's really like Google Meet and not the one we had earlier in P2P. So based on your needs, it's fine to decide if you use one or the other. As P2P, we've seen it works very good for only two users too. Then let's see the Bro for broadcast, which is very different from the others, as this one is based for one user speaking to many viewers. You can choose your username, the room ID, I will keep the automatically generated one, and you can define if you are a broadcaster or a viewer. So we join as the broadcaster, and here it is my view as a broadcaster. So currently I'm live, it's not before joining it. So I have different options available to share the room URL, to toggle the video or not, to start screen sharing. So let's join it on my mobile. So join again, and I can only join as viewer as there is already one broadcaster. Click on it. Do I want to enable the broadcaster audio? I will say no, so I don't have echo. And I can interact with the broadcaster. So I can say, hello, I love what you do send message. I received a notification that I received a message. I can click on toggle messages. And I have the view of the different messages here. From there, you can see all messages. You can also toggle viewers and see the list of person and disconnect if you have some people you want to kick. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed discovering Miro Talk with us. If you find our content useful, please hit the like button to make it more visible to other open source lovers. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button to not miss our upcoming videos. In the meantime, you can watch one of our existing platform overviews like this one here.